So today, um, Minnesota just proposed a, a law that would um, penalize uh, young transgender female athletes in middle school and high school um, with jail time if they were caught playing on a female sports team or in a bathroom or in a locker room. And uh, as a trans female athlete, um, I figured this was a good opportunity to just kind of share uh, my experience the last six months playing on an all-women's college team and my experiences with it and the outcomes and all of that. So, I don't know. Buckle up. It's going to be interesting. But, uh, yeah, so I'm getting ready for class. Um, and I just had surgery, so walking around is still a little difficult, so I'm going to sit down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I play field hockey, and I play field hockey at my all-women's college. Um, and it was not what I expected. Uh, with all of the hate and everything, the way they make it sound is that you know, other female athletes, they did, they feel threatened by a trans female athlete being on the team. And they feel um, like we take away opportunities from them and that they fear for their safety. Um, last week, I went to practice and it was one of my first practices back after surgery because um, I can't still really run or do anything physical yet. And about... Half the team told me at one point or another during the practice that they were glad that I was back and that they missed having me there. And I would joke with them of like, oh, come on, it's not that big of a deal. And they're like, no, it's just something about having Erica here, you know, and having you here and that your presence and your energy is great. And that meant a lot to me because, you know, I uh, am not good at field hockey, but um, I'm learning and I never want to make somebody uncomfortable, and so the fact that, like, my teammates are coming up to me willingly and telling me, hey, we're just, we missed you, and we missed having you around, and we're glad that you're back, um, meant a lot, and, uh, it's a little shocking, right, because it doesn't, that doesn't fit the narrative that people are being told. We're seeing all of this stuff, thinking that, oh my god, all these, uh, women are losing all these opportunities and scholarships and that they are feeling threatened in the locker room and they're feeling threatened on the field and all this and it's like one okay i'm the only to my knowledge trans female at my college which is an all women's college like i said and two is that i'm the only one to my knowledge that plays a sport so out of approximately, we have 150-ish athletes on campus. Um, there's there's one of me. And uh, there aren't very many of us in the NCAA or in college that also play sports. We're not as populous as people seem to think. Um, so it's it's a little ridiculous when you think, like, you, we, you, you have this view that, oh, my God, we're coming in droves and we're like taking over the institution but in reality like we're the ones that are outnumbered we're the ones that are just kind of coming here we're like yeah I just kind of want to play like my first experience with my coach um I emailed her and I was just expressing interest in wanting to try it I didn't expect anything of it I expected them to say no and I didn't get an email for like six months um but she was really busy especially with COVID and everything and I was a new student she hadn't met me yet and then all of a sudden, she's like, hey, let's jump on a Zoom call. I was like, okay. So we get on Zoom and we're talking and she's like, yeah. So I like did some background checking on you and I saw that like you have your Instagram and YouTube. Oh, and I was like, oh crap, here we go. She figured me out and she's going to sit here and tell me, you know, we're not going to want you and all of this stuff. Well, instead she was like, yeah, so, uh, you know, when you get here, let me know, practice like, we'll have you as, like, a team manager and something until you kind of figure it out, and I'll work with you till you learn, but I'd love to have you on the team. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And um, I figured she probably told the entire team, like, 
in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, she probably told them just to expect and make sure it was okay. And because I don't, I never want anyone to feel like upset or like weird about it. But come to find out that she didn't, because she was like, that's your business, that's no one else's. And uh, the reality was is that most people didn't even know when I showed up. And I was like, oh, it's really obvious that they'll figure out. But um, no, most people didn't even know. And it wasn't until I started talking about it that people were like, oh, really? Wow, I never, you know, I, I never knew or mm, that didn't really matter because to them, I was just a first year student, Erica, that wanted to learn how to play. And I had a reputation on the field of like, I just never really gave up because I, you know, you always get this feeling like you have something to prove, right? And I wanted to prove that I belonged there. And that's, I think, what people mistake about trans athletes is they think, oh, we're going to outperform them because of X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Well, um, honestly, like, I would argue the only reason that we might get close to outperformance if we've actually been on hormone therapy and follow the proper policies is um, we have something to prove. <laughs> We're trying, like, I'm on the team sitting there every day trying to prove that I belong there, trying to prove to myself and to them that, like, hey, I'm not just here for, you know, the uniform or the, you know, the praise or whatever. I'm here to play, and I'm going to keep getting up when I keep getting knocked down. I'm going to try to learn and do my best, and it's kind of like you can have two people that are both intelligent, but one studies really hard and really wants to do well, and the other one doesn't really study at all. Well, one of them's going to get a, a good grade, the other one's not. Are you going to say that, well, it was unfair because the other one studied? Like, no. So it's the same thing with trans athletes. Like, yeah, in the weight room, I can bench the most out of everybody. But, okay, cool. When, like, we're not, our sport isn't bench benching weight. It's running and using a stick and a field hockey ball and playing in concert with others on a team. So playing on this team has taught me so much. And it's I've developed so many close friendships with these women. And I've gone through hell and back. And we've worked so hard. And our first game is coming up. And, you know, we have shed so much, like, blood, sweat, and tears and and I will say, I played on a men's team before. When I was younger, I played on a volleyball team in high school. And men, like, the real only difference that I've seen between male and female teams is men are very individualistic and are like, I have to prove that I'm the best at all times. Whereas women were very much community-based of, like, we got, we got aggression, especially on the field, but we'll also, like, be right there to pick you back up after we knock you down. And we'll bring extra, like, body wash and shampoo to the locker room in case you forget yours. Um, and speaking of the locker room, you know, I've talked to several of them. I'm like, hey, if you're uncomfortable, I totally understand. And they're like, why would why would I be uncomfortable? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And they're like, look, the amount of things I've seen in the locker room, like, you're not going to, you're just one of us. Like, it's not going to be anything different. Um... And so, like, all of these fears and these misconceptions, like, they're, they're damaging people's lives. They're damaging people's lives more than this false idea that trans athletes are damaging women's sports. You know, the whole Title IX, oh my god, we're taking away from women's sports? Really? What am I taking away as one person from the sport of field hockey. I'm a mediocre player at best. Coach ranked us as like our skill level and I'm number 15 out of 17. Uh, I'm not the fastest. Um, in some areas I'm pretty strong, but that's not what makes a good athlete. Um, the only benefit and positive I bring is my mentality and the fact that I'm willing to learn. Like, those are my biggest strengths. And so if I'm being punished for that, then uh-oh. Um, but, like, these are... And we're talking about young kids here with these laws that are affecting them. And, like, being on 
the field hockey team has given me a sense of family that I have not had in my entire transition. It just gives it gives me a sense of normalcy. Like when I want to escape the world for a little bit because people are just mean and shitty and crappy, like I'll go hang out with the team and for a couple hours I'll forget that there are people out there that are trying to take away my basic human rights. And I'll forget for a little bit about how the world is and we'll just go and we'll hang out and we'll talk and we'll do stupid things and we'll just do regular what college age girls do. And like this experience has helped me so much. The amount of support I've had going through my surgery and my transition, like these these women are my cheerleaders. Several, some of them drove seven hours to where I got my surgery done to drive me home and stay with me in the hotel and help me so so I could get better. And, like, they come over my room and, um, like, help do my laundry and help, like, clean and do dishes because I can't. And, like, that, that's what women's sports has. Like, that's what you're denying to all of these people because they're people. And we can't keep sitting here and say women's sports need to be protected. Because you're not, apparently you're not even asking the athletes. Or you're asking one or two. Because no one's asked anyone on my team. And Because I, I know what they're going to say. They're going to be supportive. They're going to be like, yeah, no, we love Erica. She's great. Because that's what they tell me all the time. And yet... Somehow, there's this view that I'm this huge threat. How am I a threat to anybody? Seriously. You know, like, I don't know. But this these last six months taught me a lot. A lot about being on a team and being, um, being together and the importance of family and the importance of helping each other out and the importance of just seeing each other for who they are that so many other people can learn and I really hope we don't continue down this path where we're denying the opportunity for so many young trans women and trans men to be able to find that solidarity to find that family that they're looking for because we lose support in every other area so you know why take this away? Sure, we can sit here and talk about science all you want. And the fact of the matter is, once we start doing that, you're going to have your view and I'm going to have mine. It doesn't matter that I study and research biological and genetic sciences. And um, it doesn't matter that I have published papers in the field and work in medicine. And, and because at the end of the day, once we start talking about that, it's all semantics. Because the reality is is that there's always going to be someone with an advantage in a sport. And I can see somebody taking that out of context right now and saying, oh, well, you're saying that it's just okay that trans women have an advantage. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if Kobe Bryant decided that um, they were transgender and started playing on women's NBA, that at, on the surface, you're like, wow, that really wouldn't be fair. They'd be so good. But they're already amazing. So, like, why are they allowed to play? Because they have such a big advantage. Because they have such, you know, they're already there at that level. They're already superior in that sport. So, this exists in sports already. And it's okay if you're cisgendered. It's okay if you're not trans. But if you're trans, all of a sudden, now it's a problem. You know? Where are all the people that were upset because we kept giving out participation trophies for sports and people need to learn how to lose gracefully? It's kind of like people just try to justify their hate and their fear with very mild false claims and misconceptions. But this video is going on longer than I expected. So yeah, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Um, and feel free, if you have hate, sure, share it. I really don't care because the reality is is I've got it I've got an entire team of field hockey players that got my back and nothing you could nothing you could say could change that 
Nothing you could say could make them think that I'm here to threaten them or take their rights away. And if you sit there and say that, well, they just don't know any better, now who's the one telling women what they should and should not think? Now who's the one taking away women's voices and women's rights? Maybe it's the ones that are spreading this false information. Because it seems to me no one's really talking to the to the vast majority of female athletes. All right, I have to get ready for class, but it's good talking. Bye.